What is up guys, Sleepy Medic here, and welcome back to another dose. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Nasser, and I'm now a fourth year medical student studying at King's College London, which means I get to leave my house bright and early at 6.30 in the morning in order to get to the hospital on time to start my day. So today I'm starting on the neonatal intensive care unit which is pretty exciting. My friends who had this placement last year, they said that it was a lot of great experience. They got to see a lot of different things, take many patient histories and do newborn baby exams and things like that. So I'm pretty excited to, to get that done myself. I'm gonna hop on the tube, catch up with you guys in a bit. photo shoot around central London. I'm really loving them and I'm gonna be uploading them over the next couple of weeks over on my Instagram page. So if you guys aren't following me there already, you definitely should, somewhere over here. And also a big thank you and shout out to Aaron. He's a fantastic photographer. You guys can check out his stuff somewhere over here. All right, I'm gonna go into the hospital and I'll see you guys another time. Peace. just finished my day on the neonatal intensive care unit. Our ward round was supposed to start at 8 but it started a little bit later at about 8.30 and ran for a long long time because they were doing both the postnatal ward round, sorry the postnatal handover and also the neonatal handover. And then we actually went on the ward to see all of the neonates, the tiny tiny premature babies. Their head was smaller than my fist like they were tiny tiny. We had quite a lengthy ward round going from one baby to the next talking about sort of what had happened to them overnight. Most of it was babies that were a little bit jaundiced needed some fluids, some bloods. So yeah, there was quite a lot of that until 12.30 p.m. And then we went for our afternoon teaching. We had one hour of an online Zoom lecture and then one hour of case-based discussions with the other students on the child health block and our clinical supervisor. So each student from the different clinical areas that we were on for the previous week gave a presentation or a discussion about a case that they saw that was interesting or just one that they wanted to talk about. So we had cases discussed from the neonatal intensive care unit, from the outpatients clinic, which is where I was last week, also the wards, pediatric emergency department, and I think there's one more that I'm forgetting. But anyways, that was that. The final teaching session of the day was actually canceled. Instead, I'm gonna go home a little bit earlier and use this extra time to do a little bit of practice, past medicine for pediatrics, and then also go to the gym and uh, work a little bit on some other stuff as well. So my train is coming soon. I'm just chilling in this beautiful, beautiful park over here until it comes. Above ground. 
around the Jubilee line had severe delays because of trespassing somewhere further down along the line. <laughs> Finally home and I've got things to do. Let's set you guys down right over here. Let me check my to-do list real quick. I've got to fill out my daily engagement log from today in fourth year of medical school here at King's College London. Every single day that we're in the hospital, every single day that we're on clinical placement, we need to write down what it is that we did that day. And then that needs to be signed off once a week by somebody who was with us throughout that week. And that way, I guess they're keeping tabs on us that we're actually attending and doing the things that we're supposed to do. Okay, so if you look over here, you'll find a nice list of things that we need to do today. We have medical school to-do list, we have YouTube and life admin to-do list, we have gym and we have dinner, and then we have sleep early because I have to wake up at 5.30 a.m. again tomorrow. So here's what I'm gonna do. I've got about an hour until the time when my sister and I would usually cook dinner. So I'm gonna use that time in order to do all of my med school related things. Then I'm gonna cook dinner, I'm gonna eat dinner while watching an episode of The Office with my sister. Then I'm gonna go to the gym. Then when I come back, I'm gonna sit down and be super, super productive and bang out all of this YouTube and life admin stuff that I have to do. Whew. All right, busy evening. I'm gonna go fill up this water, set this camera down in a nice place for you guys to see me and get to work. steak, the nice crispy potatoes, and the office on the TV. Alright guys, I'm back from the gym. I'm absolutely exhausted. Quickly munching down a toasty, and I've got a protein shake over there as well. It is 10.15, and I need to sleep at 10.30, because I'm waking up at 5.30, and I would like 7 hours of sleep. But that's not gonna happen. I'm just gonna quickly demolish all this food, jump into bed, and I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, guys. Another very early wake up. Just finished having breakfast and now I'm sipping on my coffee. I'm gonna go fix this mess of a hair, brush my teeth, pack my bag, get dressed, and get going. <sighs> Cannot wait until these early wake ups are over. <laughs> This is too much. So today is day two on the neonatal intensive care unit. As far as what we have planned for today, the morning is very similar to what we did yesterday, attending the handover and then the ward round, um, looking at all the neonatal babies. But in the afternoon, we don't have teaching like we had yesterday. Instead, we're gonna go to the postnatal round, so see the mothers and babies after they were born. And we'll be able to talk to the mothers and the parents, take a history from them about what the pre-birth during birth and post birth experience was like, um, any complications that might have happened with the child, and then figuring out management. And that's where the majority of the focus is for us as fourth year medical students this year. 10,000 hour rule, practice makes perfect. I'm gonna try and put all that into effect. All right, I think I'm gonna put the camera down because I'm running a little bit late and I wanna make sure I get there on time. So <laughs> I'll catch you guys later on. All right guys, so done placement for today. Just sitting down at the train station on my way home. But I decided to sit down, even if it's here on the floor, because I have been standing up all day. <laughs> my back is completely broken and I cannot stand any longer. So today is actually in the future. It's a week after the other days that I've recorded for this vlog. The reason that I'm putting this in here is because I'm still waking up at 5.30 in the morning this week and I've had a very interesting last two days, so I wanna tell you guys all about them. So this week, I'm actually in the pediatric emergency department, and I feel like in the last two days, I've done more clinical skills, I've seen more patients, interacted with more patients than I have in the last two weeks. It's honestly been so busy. Both days have been very interesting and very varied, and I'm just so happy with what I've been able to do. Now, 
before I tell you about the clinical skills that I performed in a &E, let me take a minute to talk about the sponsor of today's video, ExpressVPN. Now, if you didn't know, your internet service provider can see every website you've ever visited on your computer, and in the US, they're even legally allowed to sell that data to other companies. A VPN is a virtual private network that uses IP masking and data encryption to allow you to browse the internet anonymously, protecting both you and your data. ExpressVPN is easy to use, it's really fast, and it's rated the number one VPN by CNET, The Verge, and Wired. If you've been watching this channel for any period of time, I'm sure you know by now that the US version of The Office is one of my favorite shows of all time. And if I go to Netflix on my computer and I search The Office, you'll see that it's nowhere to be found. Shout out Michael Scott though. But with ExpressVPN, all I have to do is open up the app and click connect. And when that's done, if I refresh the page, you'll see that the US version of The Office is right there. It's literally that easy. Find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting the links in the description down below or going to expressvpn.com slash karma medic. All right, now back to the pediatric emergency department. I've been taking histories from multiple patients. I did direct ophthalmoscopy. I did a neuro exam, urine dips. I took bloods as well, venipuncture. What else have I done? I've listened to a bunch of hearts, a bunch of chests. It's just been a very, very busy two days. And yesterday I actually took bloods from my consultant, from the head of the entire pediatric emergency department. And while I was taking blood from him, we had two other medical students watching me and a, like senior, I think it was an ST3 or an ST4 watching as well. So I couldn't have asked for a bigger audience and I couldn't have asked for any more pressure. Thankfully, his veins were absolutely huge. It was an easy poke and it went in the first time. Everything was good. And actually what happened just before that is really interesting. Right before I was asked to take bloods from that consultant, there was a blue light call, which means that there was a medical emergency and there was a patient coming in by ambulance. And so we put taking the bloods aside and the consultant started assembling the team that was going to go with him to attend this call. It was a patient who had and so after he assembles the team, he looks at me and he's like, would you like to attend? And I'm like, absolutely, of course I'd like to attend. Absolutely crazy, what an eventful day. And it's just amazing to see that as a fourth year medical student, we get so much more responsibility, we're taken a lot more seriously and we're actually treated as part of the team. When a patient comes into the emergency department, a doctor will look at us and say, do you want to go take the history from this patient? We'll be the first person to see that patient which is honestly really, really cool. It's kind of everything we've worked towards, everything we've hoped for as first, second, and third year medical students. So it's amazing that it's finally happening. It also really helps that everyone in the department is such a pleasure to talk to. They're so nice to interact with and they actually want to teach us, actually want us to learn, so get us involved in different situations completely different experience to the outpatients clinic that I've had in first week. Anyways, guys, it's 10.30 right now, which means I need to wake up in seven hours at 5.30. I'm gonna get to bed and we'll continue on with the vlog from where it was from last week. Peace. Friday, finally, the last day of this week where I have to wake up at 5.30 in the morning and find myself a nice YouTube video to watch. Sit down and enjoy that before my day starts and everything gets hectic and busy. I'm running late, I'm running late, I'm running late. Yesterday, I don't think I vlogged anything. There was a lot going on. I felt like I was running around the whole time, so I didn't get a chance to pick up the camera. Early in the morning, we had a long clinical skills practice session, which was very useful. We got to practice venue puncture, cannula insertion, and also suturing, which is great because for those skills, I feel like you just need to do them as often as you can, and as much practice as you can, and that's how you'll build your confidence. This morning, I've decided not to go back to the neonatal intensive care unit. I've decided to go to the postnatal ward, and the reason for that is that there will be many newborn babies there who are not in need of intensive care, and so we'll be able to do a lot of newborn exams on them, which is something that's important for us to learn during this block. And then at the end of the day, I think I'm gonna spend maybe an hour or two in the library trying to get some work in there because it's Friday and I have a really fun weekend ahead of me planned. So I wanna try and get in as much work done as I can now while I'm already at the hospital, while I'm in the working mood and the working zone. Now approaching the bathroom. One does not stop here. 
these time of well there. So basically a newborn baby exam is a head to toe assessment of the baby that has to be done within 72 hours of when they're born and it's used to make sure that you look for any defects at all anywhere on the body. You look at the head, you look at the eyes, the heart, their hips, you check the spine as well for neural tube defects, uh, you check all their reflexes, you look into their palate to make sure that they have a closed palate and things like that. You document any abnormal findings that you do find and if there are any abnormal findings you make sure you request the right investigations and have the appropriate management for those things. Because the earlier you find something the more quickly you'll be able to treat it and the better outcomes the child will have. So I watched one of those get done yesterday on a preterm infant. They were absolutely tiny and it was honestly so cute like testing all their reflexes especially the moro. When you drop them they sort of open their arms out like this very very cute so yeah hopefully i'll get the chance to do one of those myself today other than that we've got more clinical skills teaching this afternoon and what we have planned is male and female urinary catheterization is when you take a plastic flexible tube and stick it in the urethra of the man or the woman in order to be able to drain urine from the bladder so yeah not exactly the top clinical skill that i want to be doing all the time but obviously it's something that i'm going to have to be doing so i need to learn how to do it properly so this book finally showed up in the mail it is the fourth and fifth year med student equivalent of the red green and yellow one that I used in my first three years. The yellow one that I used in my first three years. It's not that big, it's like a pocket handbook, but it has a ton of useful information about the medical specialties. So I'm gonna do my best to spend somewhere between 30 minutes to an hour around lunchtime, most days that I'm in the hospital. I'm gonna try and sit down and have a read through that book, take down some notes and do something useful and productive in the middle of my day. In case you're wondering where I'm filming, Service to All right, I think I'm going to put the camera down for now. I'm going to use Notion on my phone to go through the newborn baby assessment and then, yeah, start my day and probably catch up with you guys at lunch or in the afternoon. So, see you in a bit. Oh my goodness. Where do I start with this day? Shortly after I left you, I went to do my first um, newborn baby assessment, the NIP exam that I was talking about this morning. So when I was doing my first ever newborn baby assessment, as I was checking for uh, congenital hip dysplasia, the baby peed all over me, <laughs> all over my apron. Uh, I had to put my hand out with my gloves to stop it from going everywhere. And then shortly after that, the ST3 that I was shadowing, she got a bleep saying that there was a category one C-section going on two floors down and she just sprinted out of the room. Like she disappeared within a second. And I was kind of looking around like, oh, what am I supposed to do? So I just said, you know what? I'm gonna chase her. So I caught up to her in the stairwell. We sprinted downstairs and yeah, there was an emergency C-section going on. I think it happened because the baby's heart rate was falling and they couldn't get it back up. And then that was, that was absolutely mind blowing. But I think I'm gonna tell you guys about it in a little bit because the train's almost here and I don't want to miss it, so I'll catch up with you guys in a bit. All right, so I'm finally home now. I feel like I have so much to say to the camera from what happened this morning, and then on the way home today, I actually went and picked up my brand new Apple Watch uh, early from the Apple Store. I'm so excited to dig into it and go through every single setting, customize everything that's on it. I, I live for getting new tech gadgets. Like This is my favorite thing to do of all time. Okay, but first let me update you on what happened this morning. I know I kind of left you on a cliffhanger there at the, the train station. So I ran after her into the stairwell and I caught up with her going down the stairs. And I was like, hey, hey, I'm gonna come with you. She's like, yeah, all right, come, come. We go into the side room, get our masks, our gloves, wash up and everything like that. And then I walk into theater and there's the mother on the table. Um, and they're about to begin surgery. So very shortly after I get in there, they begin with the first incision and they make a longitudinal opening across the abdomen and you know, that was okay. And then they start cutting through the layers of fascia and this is all like very quickly by the way, like cut going through the layers of fascia like really, really quickly. And then before I know it, two surgeons each had both of their hands inside the abdomen of this woman and they were like pulling, pulling apart the layers, pulling the skin, stretching it, I mean, it was so strange to watch. And every time I've been in surgery, every time I've been in theater, I've been so shocked because I always imagined that, you know, we would hold the human body so like calmly, so smoothly, move everything aside really neatly, 
but it's kind of not like that at all. Like surgery is, surgeons are like quite aggressive when they're manipulating the body and when they're trying to reach the organ that they want to get to. And in this case, it was an emergency C-section. So obviously they had to get the baby out quite fast, but still it shocks me every time. I was watching with my jaw on the floor at what was going on in front of me. And then dad came in to see the baby. Honestly, when the dad came and started like touching the baby and talking to him, like I almost cried straight up I, I almost cried so yeah that was my crazy morning definitely gonna be one that I remember for a while I feel like this is one of the stories I'll have on file for when someone asks me about an interesting thing that I saw in medical school I want to quickly go to the gym because like I said before exercise is a non-negotiable in my life so I'm gonna quickly go to the gym I have a friend coming down to London to visit for the day so I'm gonna go hang out with him tonight so yeah guys I think this is pretty much it this is the end of my week of waking up at 5 30 in the morning it has been tiring it has been a lot and i am so much looking forward to going back to waking up at a normal hour even if that's like 6 30 or 7 that's honestly fine it's so much better than 5 30 5 30 has been brutal i hope you guys have enjoyed this vlog and i hope it's been interesting i'm trying my best to give you an insight into what medical school is like as i progress through it through the different years Medical school has definitely changed quite a lot this year. I feel like things are getting very serious now. We have a lot more responsibility and a lot more things to do. So I'll be talking about that in an upcoming vlog. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please do leave a like on it and also subscribe to my channel to see more content from me in the future. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Oh, there you go. Is that gonna turn off? Hello, buddy. What's going on? Are you gonna turn off?